Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of Toy to Tuesdays. I am Brian from Sixth Gear Garage, and uh, normally I'd have with me uh, Clinton from Dirt Garage, but he can't make it tonight. He had a prior family engagement, and uh, it was last minute that I found out, so I didn't get a guest in. So it's just me rolling solo tonight, and uh, I've got some content lined up. Um, first of all, I'm really excited to say I know we talk about my 1980 a lot, and this is the one that's extremely rusty um really almost beyond repair uh, i just got a lead on a 1981 long bed here in ohio for 400 bucks um literally like five minutes before the show i got the uh the message on uh, instagram so i'm really pumped about that that's going to make that restoration so much easier so um let me know what's new, new with your projects um other than that i don't have a lot of uh Toyota projects going on right now. I did get some video of my dash restoration. I'm going to send that to you or shut it to you later in the show and get your opinion on that. Uh, I want to know what you guys think if I should just call it quits or try again because I could be happier with it, but uh, we'll see. So, um, yeah, as always, uh, there's a sticky uh, comment here up at the top if you want to send me pictures of your Toyota. That's toy to Tuesdays at gmail.com, and we'll go ahead and take a look at those later on in the show. Check out some of the viewers' rides. And let's see. Uh, oh, yeah, update on the 1989. I uploaded a video of that yesterday. That was sort of the intro of the truck, um, how it was when I got it. I'm going to have probably a couple more videos on that truck. Uh, next week, I'm going to have one after I pulled off all of the parts that were decent. So um, there'll be uh, an upcoming video about that. And I also found a lot more rust after I pulled off those parts. So that is to be continued. And then there'll be a third video of it over at uh, Mikey's Place, AKA the shop spot where we uh, got it running uh, for the first time in five years. And it does sound great by the way. Um, the engine for a 3.0 liter, there seems to be no, no issues with it at all. So we're, we're pumped about that. Uh, we figured it was had a blown head gasket or something, and we just end up swapping it for a 3.4. But as you know, a Gambler 500 build is all about staying within the budget. Uh, so we're kind of happy we got the engine, and it's in good shape. Um, and then we pulled the bed off, and the frame snapped in half. So all that will be coming down here uh, in, in a little bit. Uh, i got a couple comments here. Let's see. Built a shifter from S10 and had and a hand throttle. Oh, cool! Also put a 70s Mustang wheel on it. Nice. All right. I'm not sure what happened. We had an issue with these uh, the headphones last time in the show, and they it literally worked all week. And now I start the show, and they're cutting out again. So back to the uh, the not so sensitive microphone, I guess. <clears throat> but um, yeah, next comment. You should do a compilation video of destroying rusty Toyota frames with opera or something funny in the background. Cole, I like the way you think, and I. Th I think I might already have something kind of like that, but it's only with, uh, I think, one truck. Um, if you look up, uh, I want to say it was about a year ago, maybe, uh, my 1987 four-wheel drive, the black one. Um, that one was very rusty, as we know, and uh, I did get a lot of smashing on that one. I did put it to uh, some classical music, so I think that's right up your alley. Um, let's see. Nicholas, uh, mostly Toyota trucks. Um, I'm not really too much into the cars, but um, you know, if you have a question, I can try to help you. Um, I did have a Camry for a little while, but uh, most of our knowledge um, is with the, the trucks, especially like the what, second and third gens. Um, let me pull up that video that I was telling you about for, uh, for Cole here. So let me know if you guys have any audio issues. Um, hopefully, 
I can get this headset figured out because the microphone does sound much better, but obviously if it's going to cut out, that's not good. Uh, let's see, you got a question about closed captions. Um, I can't control anything to do with the closed captions on my end. That might be something you can do through your browser. I'm looking at it right now. Um, I don't know. Let me, let me know about that. Let me know if you can find anything out. Because I had a question about that last week, too. All right. Hang on, guys. Hang with me. I'm looking for that video for, uh, for Cole. I'll post a link down in the comments. Let's see. When was that? That was a while back. That was... Here we go. <laughs> uh, August 27th, 2020. Okay, here it is. Here it is, Cole, putting in the comments for you here. You'll enjoy that uh, frame smashing to classical music. Uh, let's see. Tom Jones did the dual diaphragm uh, brake booster swap on the 81. Yes, that makes a world of difference, doesn't it? I mean, I imagine that thing has got to stop like a BMW. Um, if you guys haven't ever driven a BMW, those things, they, they stop on a dime. Uh, at least the ones I've driven. I don't know about the older ones, but uh, let's see. 85 Toyota 4Runner SR5 five-speed. That is one of my dream vehicles. So I'm with no rust, of course. Yeah, uh, nothing like that around here. Uh, congratulations on that find. So as far as I know, uh, Clinton's still wrenching on his 89, getting the, uh, the one UZ swap, the second one UZ swap uh, buttoned up. So hopefully we'll have an update on that soon. Uh, yeah, thanks for checking in, guys. Like I said, it's just me this week. Uh, Clinton had a prior uh, family engagement, so he's unable to stop in at this point. But uh, he should be back next week. Let's see. Uh, let's, he has Nichols, uh, Nicholas has two 1987 pickups. One's 4x4 and one is two wheel drive. Any sites that sell body patch panels? Um, yeah, there's a couple out there. Uh, Nicholas, what parts are you looking for? Are you looking for like cab rockers, cab corners, uh, bed panels? Um, fiberglass or steel, do you have a preference? You got, there are some options. Um, one that I found, I think just this year, it's, um, they're out of Canada. Uh, some, it was in Eastern Canada, I believe. It was uh, Wolf Steel, I think. And they actually make steel uh, replacement panels for the four by four bed, like the whole, the whole rear uh, wheel arch. Um, which is awesome. So that could be a good answer for your, uh, your rusty 87. Let's see. The fast lane. When am I going to do the 8722RE swap on my 85? To be honest, man, um, I don't know. I, I, I saved everything. Um, in case I do want to do the swap eventually, I saved the harness and, of course, the engine and everything and the ECU. But it's hard for me to motivate myself to, to, to do that much and tear into it for an extra, what is it, like 15 horsepower, I think. Um, especially when my 22R is not in, it's not in the best of shape. It has, some, has high mileage, but it's not like it's blown or, or thrown a rod or anything like that. So it's kind of hard for me to motivate myself to do all that when I've got so many other projects and the truck runs fine as is with a 22R. Um, not to mention, I don't, the more I mess with this, the older fuel injection, the more I appreciate, I'm learning to appreciate simple carbureted motors, you know? Uh, I never was into them. I always wanted fuel injection, but it's nice because Whereas on a fuel injection, you'll have a sudden problem. It'll start running like crap just, you know, in, a, in an instant. Um, 
carbureted is nice because you'll notice it slowly starts to run worse over time. Of course, there's other headaches that come with having a carburetor, like uh, you know, just the, the tuning and all the, the vacuum lines, and there's stuff that can go wrong there too. But I think once I learn more about that, I think I'll appreciate it even more. So um, I did save all the parts though, and uh, they're just kind of chilling in the, uh, the, the the basement parts warehouse for uh, for the time being. What's up, Bob? Let's see here. Um, yeah, go get go get that uh, that eighty five for sure. Uh, cab corners and pillars. Um, which pillars? The, uh, the the B pillars or the A pillars? Um, I don't know of anyone that makes A pillars for the windshield, which is too bad because that is a common rust area on these trucks. Either they have it or they don't. Um, as far as the cab corners, oh man, I know they make them for the 89s. I don't know if they make them yet for the 84 to 88s. If so, you might want to check out that uh, Wolf Steel. Google Wolf Steel, and uh, or maybe just like Toyota Rust Panels or something like that, and see what comes up. Okay, if a solid front axle from an early Toyota can't be found, what is my next best option for a solid axle swap for my 87? Uh, that's a good question, Jim, and unfortunately, I don't have any experience outside of the Toyota axles. I know I know people run um, uh, Dana's. I mean, I'm sure you could you know put anything under there as long as the uh, the pumpkin's on the correct side, and as long as you can get uh, matching gears for front and rear. But I know uh, Dana is another popular one. If anyone in the in the uh, comments knows, uh, go ahead and uh, help Jim because unfortunately. I don't have the off-road expert here with me tonight to uh, chime in on that. Uh, there you go, Dana 44s. Thank you, Austin. Okay, what else we got here? Dundee Croc. The second gen Tacomas suck. Toyota did a terrible job of making them. Reasons: 373 gears, forward front cab mounts, cannot install bigger tires, rack and pinion steering, flimsy. Uh, immediate steering, intermediate steering, I guess. Um, yeah, it's my, I don't have any experience with the newer Tacomas at all. Um, I do, I do like the, uh, I do like the first gens though. Let's see. So you buy the housings from Trail Gear or Chevy Axle Swap. So there you go. You can buy uh, housings for the front axles for Toyotas from Trail Gear. Uh, let's see. What's this? Do you think you can fit the IFS from the 89 onto your 87? That is a good question. Um, yeah, the 89, the 3.0 liter leaked so much oil that the front suspension is in great shape on that truck. Um, yeah, there's only one lower control arm on one side that's rusty and it must be newer and not had been coated in oil for as long. And I'm curious as well if the third gen IFS is compatible at all with the second gen IFS. Um, that could really help me out uh, on restoring my very rusty 1987. I probably won't know for sure until I uh, get under there and measure, but um, we are hanging on to that for now. We're not going to scrap that that uh, front IFS. Yeah, it looks really good, really good from the video. Um, aside from that one really crusty control arm, which isn't that big of a deal. Let's see here, what else we got? Lots of comments tonight. This is good. Send all your questions my way. I'll do the best I can. Uh, okay, the ones from Trail Gear, they're called Rock Assault Housings for the uh, Toyota front axle. What else we got in here? Oh, here we go again. Yep, Paul Thompson, you can, you can buy a completely built axle from Trail Gear if you don't have a donor axle. And Diamond Axles sells housings too. So there you go, uh, Jim. 
lots of options. Thanks, guys, for uh, stepping in there with that info. All right. Well, hey, uh, I want to show you guys something here. I want to get your honest opinion on if I did okay or if this totally sucks. Um, this is, let me go over here. This is a video of my dash restoration. I told you guys it's going kind of rough. Open, oh, there we go. Hey, what's up? You don't need voice over there. So there it is. This looks really good from this angle. Um, it, it turned out great. Um, I was really happy with it, except for this top part this little recessed area, I could not get it to sit down no matter how much I heated and stretched the vinyl. You can see it's all bubbled up right there. And I even went as far as to get a pipe. I, I put a pipe on this back part and put a clamp on it uh, on a couple spots and held it there for like a week. And it still popped back up eventually. So that's a, a problem area. So I think I may start over because of that. That's the biggest eyesore. Um, I think what I'll have to do is uh, make a almost like a mold here, let me get to, um, almost like a mold of that shape to fit in there I don't know cut it out of MDF or something and clamp that down with a lot of force uh, after I get the glue and the vinyl on there and hopefully that'll keep it in place um, or I thought about just filling it in all together, but I want to make this thing look original and OEM like it would have from the factory. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I, you guys, I, I know it looks great, but I'm kind of like, if I want to make a video about how to do something, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a perfectionist, you know. I can't, I can't, I don't feel like I can show this to the public, you know, and say this is how you do this. So it wouldn't bother me, especially if I had a... Um, inclinometer to, to pop on top there I'd be fine with it but because I've, I've come this far and the last 10% is where it all went wrong um, and here you can see the vinyl I used it's look how thick that is right there I mean it's not all that stretchy uh, I think I'm gonna go I, I actually did go and find a slightly thinner vinyl this is for like boat seats or something so it's really thick and heavy-duty so I got some thinner vinyl. It's the wrong color gray, but I can always I can always uh, paint it to match. So that's that's the first eyesore. Let me get over here in the video. Um, there's the next eyesore right here. When I was trying to wrap this, you know, you can see how thick it is. It just doesn't really flex around that sharp of an angle. And over here, it just all it just all went bad. And I know part of this is even covered up by the uh, A pillar inside the truck but then underneath I couldn't get it to wrap and I would peel it off and trying to stick it back on there's some more of that right there there it is and I had to end up just cutting it and kind of folding it and I didn't even like bother gluing it again because I'm pretty sure I'm gonna rip it off and start over which is too bad because the rest of the dash the more visible area turned out great but that that bugs me right there and then of course this on top bugs me because you're always going to see that. A um, couple comments here. Let's see. Yeah, put put an inclinometer on it. That will hold it down. That that would be my plan. But um, I spent all that time filling the cracks and everything, so I kind of wanted to go. You know, want, I wanted to look like it, it should, like if it was brand new. Um, also, I need the uh, the bracket for the inclinometer, which I don't have. Uh, let's see here. I'll just let this play a little bit while I check out some of the other comments about the dash. Uh, use a vacuum pump to stretch the dash vinyl. Um, suck the air out from behind the dash with a small hole. I thought about poking like a pinhole and seeing if it's just an air pocket in there that's causing that. That's what I used to glue it, by the way. Fast Pack 92. Um, but. Uh, the vinyl is so thick. I heated it with a with a heat gun to the point where it was so hot that it burnt my fingers. I couldn't even touch it, um, and it still wouldn't stretch anymore. It stretches a lot one direction, but not a lot the other direction. 
So I'm thinking the thinner vinyl may help. I'm also thinking about maybe trying to pre-stretch it some before I lay it down. Maybe just glue like, pause this here. Maybe just glue like the front part first and then sort of like figure out where this is gonna be and stretch this area here and then go back and uh, after it's pre-stretched, try and glue it down. There's gotta be a way to do it. I mean, people, shops and stuff do this all the time. <laughs> Uh, I thought it'd be easy, and it turns out it is a lot of work, but uh, that's where I'm at. So we've, we've got some uh, some cold, rainy weather coming up here in Ohio. I may tackle that this week and uh, get back down there and, and rip this off. And, of course, I'm going to have to, like, find some nasty solvent to get all the fast tack 92 off of the dash. That's going to be fun. Well-ventilated area, but... Uh, and I don't know if I'll be able to avoid this here or not, because that's just a really, really sharp corner. And we'll see. Well, that's how it's going, though. I, I get asked every week how, how it's coming along, and uh, that's where I am. I've been to, about this far for about a month now. Um, I'm ready to get back into it. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, hey, while, I, while we're in here, <laughs> uh, this is the... 1989 frame after we pulled the bed off of it and look at this thing uh, it was, as soon as we lifted up the bed it just started to fold there it is and that video it, it got a lot of views you guys the toy content always gets a lot of views so I appreciate that you know you guys are my company's fan base um, if you get some thumbs down though, I think I think there may be some theorists out there who don't like that I'm smashing this rusty turd with a hammer. But as you can see, it was a complete pile of rust. And we'll there'll be upcoming videos here where we you'll you'll see the frame flexing in action too. It's it's real bad. So sorry if I offended anybody with my rusty truck being smashed with a uh, a hammer, but. That's just the way she goes out here in Ohio. So the good news is I saved, you can see that it's very stripped down. I saved so many good parts. They are in the, uh, in the basement for a potential future project. Yeah, it's, it was real thin metal. Um, and it actually tore, just, just ripped, the metal just ripped all the way through the sides. And uh, it was just flexing by the top box of the top of the boxed frame on both sides. Uh, broke the fuel lines, fuel was leaking out. So, um, yeah, Tom, we are definitely saving some of these parts. We're gonna save the uh, rear axle. We're saving the whole front diff, front axle, front suspension, everything. Um, the cab, unfortunately, is junk. It was, it was beyond rusty. Um, all the, all the rear leaf spring suspension, all that stuff was just so crusty. Um, it wasn't even worth trying to, to get it apart. All the, all the bolts and stuff just snap at this point. I've been there. I tried that on my 86 to try and save all the uh, rear suspension, and uh, it was bad. My, that, my 86 one ton. Yeah, leaf springs, but, I mean, I don't know. What are you gonna, who, who wants stock rusty leaf springs, you know? So they are all in the scrap pile. Um, and we're, we hung on to the fuel tank just in case we need that uh, when it comes down to put uh, the drivetrain into the Honda. Um, yeah, I pulled all the, I pulled the doors, glass. I don't know if you can see much in the video, but I pulled the entire interior um, from the inside of the truck. There was no interior left. So we, I, I tried to save as much as I could. You guys know me, man. I, I always try and save everything. That's my that's my downfall. That's why I have that 1980 because it's really uh, it's scrap condition practically. Yet I was like, oh, I want to save it because it's you know 41 years old now. It's so cool. That's how it goes. Uh, oh, hey, wait. Here, are a couple more pictures of the uh, frame that I had here. Oops. There we go. 
yeah, you can see a little more of the inside. I got the wheel in there now, the steering wheel, just to be able to turn it and push it around. But I'm going to take that out. Um, what else we have here? Yeah, there it is. Yeah, and this is over at uh, Mike's garage. He's got a lift. That's how we picked up the bed. You can see the bed's on a lift there. Uh, his channel is The Shop Spot. I think he's going to be doing a little video or two about some of the stuff he's doing, um, pulling the engine out and all that stuff too. So uh, check him out if you don't already. Much smaller channel. He doesn't get on there much, but he has some good content. And uh, that is the status of the 89. Let's see. Uh, Austin has stock rusty 85 Toyota leaf springs on the front of his S10. Oh, uh, front or rear leaf springs. I'm curious. I never knew that was a, uh, a common swap for an S10. Tom Jones. Everyone needs a scrap pile. Yes. <laughs> um, the fast lane. Yes, you are correct. A rear window from a second gen and a third gen are the same dimensions. Um, the only difference is uh, only the standard cabs are compatible or the extra cabs are compatible. You can't go standard cab to extra cab because extra cab is about two inches taller than a uh, standard cab window. But uh, yeah, and I, I heard that and I pulled the window out and I actually held it up. I set it right next to a second gen window standard cab just to make sure it was true and they are the exact same dimensions. So, yep, they can, uh, you can swap those back and forth. Kind of cool, Toyota did that. You know, they figured, hey, we already got this glass made. We'll go ahead and uh, use it for another six years. Okay, so Austin's S10 has the 85 Toyota rear leaf springs uh, and it also has the Coda springs mixed in. Nice, that is a true mutt right there. Yeah, the fast lane. Yep, yeah, that should open up your search window, you know, all the way up to uh, 95. So definitely uh, should make it a lot easier to find one for your single cab. Okay. Well, uh, you guys want to see some uh, local classifieds, see what the deals are out there this week? Um, actually, before we jump into the, the Facebook finds, I want to show you guys, uh, we talked about last week, the uh, custom cabs, um, sort of the, what would be a four-door cab, except there is only a two-door. So you basically have the, a whole full-size seat behind the front seats. And um, it's kind of like you love them or you hate them. Myself, I think they look kind of goofy, not to mention um, parts got to be scarce, being that they're, you know, so old now. But... Um, I'll show you guys a couple of these custom cabs in case you're not familiar with them. They're, they're pretty cool. They're just so odd looking that you either love them or you hate them. Um, here's one on eBay I've been following. It just ended here for $7,500. Um, 200,000 miles. It says 86. Um, let's see. Let's look at the, let the pictures do the talking here. So there it is. And you can see they just put a giant, um, I'm guessing that's fiberglass, uh, cab on the back of a regular cab with the extended frame. And these were a conversion after the factory. So this wasn't um, factory built this way. And I honestly think that the second gen custom cabs look a little bit more better proportion than the first gen custom cabs. We'll look at those in a second. Oh, I never noticed that before. A little uh, T on the hood. I wonder, I, I've never seen that before. I don't know if that's a factory option for these or what. But this one's actually in good shape. It's straight. I mean, it's rust free. A little ding there on the door. No big deal. Got some cool tube bumpers on it. Um, I thought they showed the inside of this one. Clean engine bay. Okay. Maybe not. I might be thinking of a different one. Let's see here. Oh, there it is. Yeah, there's the back. See, that's the problem is the back is all ripped up, and you're not going to find these parts from the B-pillars back 
anywhere. So you can see they've got a newer seat in there already. Uh, there's not much left of the walls, the ceiling, the armrests. Um, I guess my beef is, yeah, look at that. It's just all getting old. It's getting old and getting torn up. But my, my only beef is being around town, I mean, it, it would be horrible to have this for, like, carting around your family because, you know, there's no, there's no back door. Uh, cross country, you know, if you're driving back and forth a lot, long road trips, it'd be awesome. But getting in and out would be a pain. So this thing's pretty clean. I didn't see what state this was. Let's see, where was this located? This was in, oh, Utah, of course. Of course, it's nice. Um, here's another one from uh, Bring a Trailer. This is old. This is before they had the auctions, but they wanted 7500 for this one. And this is from 2016. But this is a really clean example. Here we go. The inside of, oh, expired. I'm not showing you what it was. Well, there you can see the seat is in much better condition. It's got all the original uh, upholstery up the walls inside. Everything's nice. Um, now, here, there's some crazy ones out there, like this one. Uh, Pinterest. Show me the tiny little picture. All right. Find a better one here. Here's one with a cap on it. That looks pretty crazy. Um, let's see. I want to find uh, the first gen custom cabs because they look really crazy. Here's a lifted one. Let's see here. Okay, here we go. Uh, this is a first gen custom cab dually. Hopefully, there's more pictures. Oh, it's a YouTube video. Right, we'll check it out. So, you can see it's got the uh, custom cab there with the Toyota dually rear and these extremely rare fenders that you found out when you paid for a set. They are pretty much non existent anymore, so if you ever see a set of those, Rear cool defenders, pick them up. Yeah, it's a long bed too. Yeah, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind owning a dually. The only problem is a 14 inch, and 14 inch tires are getting pretty uh, slim pickings nowadays. We'll slide into the window. So there's the back. I don't know if it's going to be a bolster or not, but uh, yeah. Now this one looks It's got a gigantic, um, let's see, probably about an 81, I think. Here we are, right here, this one. Look at this 1981, and look at the gigantic window that it's got. And also, notice the really cool, like, flared out fenders. Almost looks like one of the uh, modern, sort of like, Dodge dually beds where it's all, the fender goes all the way up to the front of the bed. So this thing is just so oddball that it's, it's very cool in its own way. It's got the matching trailer. Here's the interior. All original, too. Okay, and there's the inside of the trailer. There's those fenders. Man, I'd love I love to own those fenders. Just slap them on my lawn bed and cover up all that rust. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm assuming this is extremely rare. Um, uh, factory option because it has the, you know, I've never seen another fender that extends that far forward and has that little cutout in it, let alone a first gen with this gigantic window, so very rare. But like I said, so oddball that it's it's just cool. Uh, here's another dually here. Over on mud. There it is. A lot like that uh, the blue one that we looked at.
So those are the custom cabs. In case you guys hadn't uh, seen any of those in real life, they're pretty rare. Um, I have never seen one in person. Oh, here's a nice one, 1978. Gotta check this out. This beachfront Verbo is about to become part of an unforgettable vacation memory. For uh, <laughs> copyright, sorry YouTube. That's cool. I like that a lot. That looks just. It looks awesome from the rear. It looks like a wide body almost. So there you go. There's some custom cabs for you. Let's see if this guy's gonna show us the inside here. All right, come on, show us the back. There we go. Okay, so it does have that sort of diamond pattern, just like the uh, other one had, the blue one. So I guess that is factory. That's clean. I like it. Did they say what they were asking for this? Let's see here. Hmm. Nope. I thought I saw a price on the front windshield. Is that it? Just says one owner. Oh wait, what is it? Show me the price. Here we go. That is incredibly cheap. So thirty-five hundred bucks. I'd buy that right now. How old is this? Oh, it's from twenty twelve. That's why. <laughs> That's why nobody wanted these in twenty twelve. Yeah, yeah, Jeff B. Right on. Th Thirty-seven fifty or what is it? Thirty-four seventy-five. But this is also nine years ago when these trucks had little to no value so <clears throat> all right got a couple emails here guys we'll check out some readers uh, viewers rides here so we got uh, Austin's super badass s10 and this is the one that has the Toyota uh, suspension on here Whoa. Nice. Whoops. And we got a 1990. Ooh, Australia. Oh, no. The pictures aren't showing up. Jared, I don't know why, but they don't show up. They're all broken images. So if you can try and resend those, I'll definitely check it out. Always a fan of the, uh, the overseas trucks or Hilux, as the uh, rest of the world got them named. Uh, let's see, any in spam? Nope, all right. <clears throat> all right, check it up on the uh, comments here. So yeah, you guys you guys like those? Let me know. Would, would you own one? Would you buy one? Would you drive it if it was given to you for free? Like I said, I think some are pretty cool, but uh, at the same time, I don't know. I wouldn't want one for a daily. Definitely not for a daily. Um, especially because you know, you're never going to find another frame should the frame rot out or you know, if you get in an accident. You're pretty much SOL on uh, finding parts. Uh, let's see. I have seen the four-door first gens in Australia. I've seen the second gens, uh, third gens too, and I love them. And that's a truck that I would love to own, of course, when you got them in the U.S. So the only ones that we have are imported and super expensive. But uh, yeah, Tom, yeah, that one can all be fixed pretty easily. You know, I, I'd say I'd rather work on fixing an interior than fixing a rusty body or a rusty frame for sure. Yeah, it, Tom, Paul, you're right. It would be like uh, getting into a first-gen 4Runner when the roof is on, yes. Except, at least in a 4Runner, you have that uh, second door handle on the back of the passenger side door, you know, to get out in case, I don't know, 
the truck's on fire and you're in the back by yourself. Whereas on these, I noticed they don't have that second door handle. So good luck getting out if you need to get out fast. Uh, let's see. The fast lane thinks they stopped doing a custom cab in 89. That sounds about right. I've never seen a third gen custom cab. So I bet you're right. Um, plus the 89s, by the 89s they had the longer extended cab. What was it like? Um, an extra foot maybe? Um, so that they had enough room to put that fold down rear seat back there. So I guess it kind of eliminates the need for a custom cab when you can have those built in seats. Which really aren't good for adults, but uh, better than the uh, space behind the 84 to 88s. Uh, let's see. Wonder if anybody ever got one of those rear dually axles and regeared it to match a 529 first gen front and put 35s on it. I believe it would look sick. Um, I've seen four wheel drive duallys. Um, so yeah, it can be done. It can definitely be done. I don't know for sure how exactly what the, if there's any extra steps involved. I know those axles are specific. I don't even think I don't even think that's a, a regular six lug bolt pattern. I don't think that's um, what is it uh, six by five and a half. I think that's a larger uh, six bolt pattern for those dualies. So there's definitely some uh, some work to be done and some research, but it is possible because I have seen it done. Uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah, the one without the camper was nice, for sure. All right, guys, well, thanks for hanging with me. Uh, we're going to go over and take a look at some of the Facebook finds for this week here. And I do some local searches here, and also I come across some of these um, on different Toyota groups so when I see one I save it and uh, we check it out so you know we always start with the first gens let's start with the uh, second gens today I don't want to do all the first gens and run out of time here so um, I also look for some up uh, Clinton's way up there in Canada because he's always telling me how cheap everything is up there and he's right things are cheap up there so Oh, okay. This is actually not a pickup, but a Land Cruiser, 85 Land Cruiser. Um, remember, everything's in Canadian, 10,000 Canadian, uh, 327,000 kilometers. But um, yeah, these Land Cruisers, 60 series, they're getting expensive. So if you ever thought about buying one, your your time is running out because they're getting very expensive, just like the 80s are. But the 60s are already too late for finding like a nice rust free one at a decent price but there it is for 10 grand yeah you know a little rough around the edges but um if you're in the market i mean especially up there in canada oh i didn't i just noticed that that's some pretty bad sheet metal right there and that's all actually all rotted away right there so yeah you know what Ten thousand canadian <laughs> what's that like 7500 us yeah it's, that's asking that's asking a bit much i think yeah, you got rust around there too. Now that I uh, see all this rust, I'm having second thoughts. Rust hole there. But uh, maybe they're pretty scarce up there. I don't know. That's a good question for uh, for Clinton. And also, not a pickup, but cool, in my opinion. Uh, somebody asked if I'm familiar with the Toyota cars that are at all. This is a 1987 Tercel. And I don't know if you guys knew, these things were available in four-wheel drive. Um, and they're pretty capable off-road, too. And the cool thing is, some of these even came with a little um, uh, inclinometer on the dash, just like the pickups did. And that's actually the one that, the inclinometer that I have in my 1985 is out of a, out of a uh, 85 SR5 TRD Tercel. So... It wasn't a direct, a direct fit. I had to trim the uh, case a little bit to get it to sit on my dash nice. But uh, there it is. 
these things are pretty cool and they are definitely capable off-road um, if you, uh, I bought it because um, the uh, inclining meter is only like 50 bucks on eBay versus 100, what is it, two or 300 bucks for a Toyota one now? It's ridiculous. Um, the only downfall is it only has the both tilt gauges. It doesn't have the uh, altimeter, um, which is fine because I live in Platt, Ohio. But yeah, there's that. I thought that was kind of cool for uh, 1500 bucks. I mean, I don't even see these things anymore. Um, let's see here. This is a 1988. It's out in California. Uh, four by four, 8,500 bucks. Let's see. It's got lockers, lift, tires, uh, new paint, cab off frame powder coating. So he's put a lot of work into it, which makes me wonder why. I don't know. It's a lot of work for something that probably wasn't that rusty to begin with, or was it? I don't know. It'd be interesting to know the full history of the truck. But uh, here's the inner side. Honestly, the frame does not even look all that special to me. Here's the inside. Um, this out this this makes me very suspicious of why it's bedlined. Why would you? I mean, if you if you just had your, your truck fresh painted and the body was good why would you do that uh, look at the body lines here I think this thing may be uh, a polished turd look at why they why they cut that up there I don't know the only reason I could guess was that it was rusty and why else would you cut that I don't know so I would not buy this truck uh, because I would hate to see what kind of damage and or rust I had before so Always be suspicious if you're seeing a truck that has the uh, the bed liner over the over the body. Easy to cover up rust that way. Uh, I assume that's a dash cap, not the actual original dash, or else I'm sure it'd be cracked being out in California. Um, yeah, and just weird things like they they could have bothered painting the wheels, or maybe that's maybe that's like plastic dip coming off. I don't know, but seems like an awfully high price for this truck with these concerns on it. I don't know what happened there. Like, was he backing up and the wheel fell off? I don't know. So, I would be weary of that. And I don't believe that it only has 25,000 miles either. That's Did he show the cluster? Let's see here. No, he didn't show the cluster. At least, not that I can read the mileage on. But uh, so there's that. Um, I'd always be suspicious of a truck that has those kind of treatments done to it. Here's a 1988. This is out in Oregon, and it, it sold already. It, w it was obviously a good deal. Uh, SR5 Forerunner, three grand or best offer. Uh, manual swapped, 3.0 blew a head gasket, and he's just done with it. Um, it's a little crusty looking, but it comes with uh, new stereo if you care about that, new carpet, floor mats, extra R150F, uh, extra transfer case, extra cross member, uh, rear diff master kit, rear brake rebuild, new set of 488s, new interior panels, so a lot of parts. I think this would have been a good deal. High miles though, but uh, we'll check it out. There it is. For three grand, I mean, with a blown 3.0 liter, just drop a 3.4 in it, and you've got, you know, you got a nice forerunner. Yeah, there's some of that. Now that doesn't look like rot as much as it looks like uh, impact damage, which was just left unpainted and then started to rust. And I'm guessing, I don't know, is that an original color for these trucks? I'm thinking it is because the graphics look like they're old and kind of faded. So I don't think it's been repainted, which is a good sign, especially on these old Toyotas. So there you go, three grand, and it's sold. Let's jump back to comments for a second here. Um, let's see here. Okay, here we go. Yeah. All the Land Cruisers, especially the 60 Series, are rusted out. And the 80 Series, they're getting bad too. If you buy an 80 Series uh, from the you know Midwest, Northeast, 
Um, the underside is going to be pretty rusty. You know, you may even have some bubbles or holes starting to come through in the body. That's just the way it goes. Um, unless, like, like I said, Fluid Film doesn't sponsor me, but I have Fluid Film the hell out of my 80 before winter, and uh, I'm planning on doing it like that every winter. So, unless you coat it with something, uh, Fluid Film or your choice of uh, rust inhibitor, you, you might be all right for the time being anyways. Uh, let's see. Okay, so about an 80 that spent its life out in Vegas. Zero rust. That's what you got to do. You got to shop, shop in the south, shop in the west for sure. Uh, let's see. Okay, Jim, didn't know that. 80s tercels are uh, longitudinal engines, so swapping them wouldn't be the worst job in the world. That's pretty cool. Did not know that. I guess it makes sense, though, if they're all-wheel drive, you know. Just built them just like they did the trucks. Uh, let's see. I'm about to begin restoring my 87 Toyota pickup 22R. I was wondering if I could ever send you some pictures or some quick tips. Would appreciate it a ton. Absolutely. Uh, go to the top pinned comment here on the uh, chat, and there's an email, toyotatuesdays at gmail.com. Send me all the pictures you want. I'd be glad to take a look at it and uh, give you any feedback. Let's see, $6,000 diesel Land Cruiser. Uh, Jeff E., yeah, uh, email, email me that. I want to check it out. Uh, Twitter Tuesdays, gmail.com. Let's see, red line. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, you got to watch out. Uh, the worst thing you can do for a repair is use the spray foam in your body panels. That's just going to hold more moisture and accelerate everything and just destroy the sheet metal over time. Um, that's that's bad. I mean, I'm glad you caught that, Cole, because that would have been an unfortunate purchase. <clears throat> Little PB blaster, it's fine. <laughs> yes. Um, okay, so there's a uh, recipe for an undercoating, I'm guessing this is, about PB blaster, auto trans fluid, and a touch of soap is supposed to stop rust. Um, was thinking about spraying the inside of my frame with it. I haven't heard that. Um, obviously, you know, fluid film is what I use. I've also heard good things about linseed oil. Uh, I guess it dries sort of, doesn't stay as, as uh, fluid as fluid film, but it dries a little bit and it stays really sticky. So I, that's a common uh, practice, I guess. But never heard about that combination, Tom. But uh, if you want to try it, let, let me know. I'm curious, what do you do? How do you get the soap to combine? I don't know. I wonder if all those things would mix together. You would think oil and soap would like separate, you know? I don't know. Curious. If anyone knows about that, uh, let us know in the comments. All right, caught up on comments. We're going to jump back. We got about five minutes left. We're going to jump back to some classifieds. Uh, we'll do some third gens. And we'll work our way back to the first gens if we get some time here. This is a 1994 runner up Clinton's way. Um, 426,000 kilometers, remember, this is Canada. And, okay, this guy had a big description. I'm not going to read all this for you guys, but basically uh, it's got a lot of parts in it, a lot of new parts. Um, he's looking for eight thousand dollars for best offer. Uh, <laughs> let's check it out. No, why is this over here? Get back over here. All right. So there it is. Okay, I don't know why they're doing this. Yeah. So very built. I gotta say that the custom bumpers and everything looks real nice. That's, I don't see much rot. Maybe a little bit right there. What are those tires? Are those uh? Oh, I haven't, I haven't seen those tires in forever. Are those uh, Thornbirds? If we got any uh, tire experts in the comments tonight, 
I, I want to say those are thorn birds. I haven't seen those in forever though. Uh, custom drawer setup. So yeah, there you go. And that was seventy nine ninety nine, eight thousand uh, dollars Canadian. Keep in mind. So what's that like six thousand U.S. So I mean, considering that, not a bad rig, you know, just for all the custom parts and the work's already done. You got a nice second or second gen forerunner that's basically trail ready, minus those <laughs> those thorn thorn chickens, as Tom calls them. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember reading bad things about them back in the day, that they as in they suck off road. I don't know. I never had a set. I can't say for sure. Uh, here's another 1994 runner, 5,000 bucks. This is also in Canada, so what's that? Four grand US, maybe? He needs a truck, six inches of lift, 3.4 swapped. Um, what else we got? Da 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 da. He has the same. Are those the same? <laughs> he has the same tires. I guess the uh, Thornbirds are, are popular up there. I love this picture. Man, Canada's so nice. The wheeling up there has to be awesome. So there's his uh, 3.4 swap there. I'd say not a bad rig for the price. I mean, you got a basically a, a built trail rig ready to go for 4,000 bucks US. Clinton's right, man. Stuff's cheap up here. Um, all right. Let's jump back into the uh, the uh, first gens here. This is a 1979. $4,700. bucks. This is in Washington. 69,339 miles. Very low miles. Automatic. Okay, this is a two-wheel drive. And I saved this because, well, it's a lot like my truck. Uh, far less rusty. But... Um, I don't know. I think I think the price is a little bit high, given the condition of the truck and being that it's an automatic. Yeah, it has low miles, but it's not really you know all that clean. The interior is uh, pretty rough, actually rougher than mine. But uh, yeah, I think forty seven hundred is a little bit high for this. Maybe if it was a four wheel drive, but uh, two wheel drive, I think this guy's a little high on the price. What do you guys think? Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. Give him thirty five hundred, and he can keep the tires. Yeah, I gotta agree with you there. Nineteen eighty up in Canada. Oh, this one was rough. Eleven hundred bucks. Um, rough shape, full power train. Ran before parked. You know how you know how that goes. Extra engine, trans, rear diff, other parts. It's real rough, man. That bed. <laughs> That's like some Ohio bed right there. Uh, yeah, this thing is a complete basket case. You gotta really want to have a, a Project Beagle to want to put this back together. But you think about it, you're getting you're getting axles. You're getting you know what looks to be an okay frame. Wheels, tires, body parts for. I'm sure you take a grand for it. A grand Canadian, mind you. So what's that, like 750 bucks US? Um, when you think of that, I consider it. Just, you know, the bed's obviously scrap. Okay, the last couple weeks we've seen frames for sale, just like rolling chassis. And one was like 2,000 bucks out in uh, California. I think it was like 2,200 bucks. Um, we've seen some, we saw one in Ohio that was like 1,700 bucks. And that just all seems really high to me. So I saw this one up in Canada, of course, where everything is priced uh, below value. And this is 900 bucks can Canadian. Uh, motor's blown. Uh, trans, diffs are good. Frame's been reinforced, so it's already been patched, which is unfortunate. But there you go. That is the cheapest four-wheel drive rolling chassis that I've found yet. Um, it does have some custom, looks like it's been... Uh, Bob in the back here, some custom work done there. But the patch job, look at that. Like, dude, <laughs> uh, could you at least, you know, 
stride. That, he, he did a good job on that one there. I'll give him that. But that other one was pretty rough. So there you go. 900 bucks Canadian. That's what you get. Uh, <laughs> yeah, some of the comments on this on these are pretty good. My thoughts exactly. Uh, this one's very vague, very vague. It's sold quick though, 2,500 bucks. This is a 1980 SR5. Um, obviously, I don't think that's the actual mileage. Needs suspension work, runs good, drives like shit. But hey, who's honest? I appreciate that. Uh, needs a few things. Don't have time or money. The bed is gone, but he can have a crappy white one if wanted. So pretty vague, and there's only two pictures. Um, that was a long bed that he bought. It actually, it looks really good there, but why is the bed gone now? And what replaces it? I don't know. So there you go. But uh, for 2500 bucks, I mean, I can see why that sold pretty quick. Nice uh, built trail ready rig here. Uh, let's see. We're after, we're after 10 o'clock, but we got a few left, so we'll run through these last uh, four, and then we'll call it a night. Catch up on any last questions you guys might have here. 1981 pickup, 800 bucks in California. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. 8,000, not 800. You know, I don't know why Facebook, they, they do this thing with the, the value. They don't let you put uh, a high amount if it's like higher than Blue Book. It's, it's stupid. That's why there's always the one, two, three, four dollars and, you know, one's missing zeros. So Facebook could do a lot to improve Marketplace. Um, rebuilt Carb. This is a 82 4x4, 182,000 miles. Uh, new clutch. Master slave, 30 inch tires, looks good tread. Very little rust starting in the typical bed spots. Uh, other than that, rust free. Crack dash, you know, stuff like that. Um, EGR needs clean to pass smog in California. That is so sad that they're still smogging 40 year old trucks in California. Man, I will say Ohio is good for that. <laughs> Ohio does not really care a whole lot. Uh, small coolant leak. So there we go. San Diego, California. Here it is. Uh, underside, interior. Looks really nice interior. Dash. Oh, I like how he's calling that bed rust. Now, I like this one because it's original paint. And yeah, there's some surface rust, but you know it's honest. You know it's an honest a body truck. You know it hasn't been patched or there's no spray foam hiding or bondo I would love to buy a truck with this over uh, a crappy heck body you know filler job or bondo or anything like that this is the way to buy them right here so there you go that's what eight thousand bucks gets you I mean I don't know it, it could be a very good candidate for a restoration I'll give I'll give him that being that it is a solid truck. So, there, I actually like the patina, man. I might have a hard time restoring this just because that looks so cool. Oh, what do you guys, you guys like patina or are you all, do you, you like shiny paint or a little bit of surface rust? Because I think, I think just the right amount of rust in the right spots can look pretty good. Um, 81. Over in Illinois, 4500 bucks. Uh, possible trade, but let's see. He's asking, okay, uh, reduced to 4500 There it is. Propane power. I know, I, don't know I, I feel like propane would be a pain, you know? I, I just want to roll up to a gas station and just fill my truck up. I don't know about having to do this propane thing, but uh, I guess it's good for off-road for certain conditions, um, especially on a, a 22R where... Certain inclines can, uh, you know, cause fuel starvation and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, there it is. It's pretty well built. It, there it is. You can tell he's from the Midwest, right? That side looks good, at least. you looking at there just uh well, engine mount i guess and there's the uh the propane conversion there 
Okay, two more. I'll jump back to the comments and uh, wrap up for the night here. We've got a 1981 Toyota pickup uh, not too far from me, North Royalton, Ohio. And I saved this because uh, it's a lot like my truck, but, but a year newer and nice. 1981, $5,000. Uh, not a lot of information on this. New carburetor and clutch. But I mean, if if this is worth, if these two-wheel drives worth five thousand dollars, I might think about uh, fixing mine up and, and flipping it, because uh, I don't know, I don't think it's worth five thousand bucks. I guess it is clean, but you can tell it's been repainted. Uh, the red is a little bit off compared to the factory red. It's a little bit uh, more of a what orangish red, I guess. A little bit of a hotter red. This looks a little bit more of a neutral or a cooler red. So, you guys, like we've been talking about right off, when I see something that's freshly painted, I get very suspicious. Oh, that's it. So, yeah, there it is. I guess if somebody really wanted a two-wheel drive truck and they had a you could source a front bumper for it, I mean, really, throw a front bumper on and you, you, your asking price is more justified. When you got all this done and you're missing the front bumper, but uh, I think it's a little bit high, 5000 What do you guys think? Yeah, it's clean, but two-wheel drive. Um, here, jump back to the comments for a second here. A uh, couple questions. Cole had a great question. What's the purpose of propane swap? Like, what's so good about it? Um, it's, it's, they don't, I don't see it as much anymore. Um, but on carbureted trucks, uh, when you're doing off-road, like a really, really steep incline, um, it'll uh, you can starve the, the car with gas and then stall and then you know possibly you know, crash, like roll down or whatever and the hill and crash. So uh, propane being a gas, um, it doesn't have that problem. It's always going to be uh, entering the carburetor. So that's a more of an off-road modification. Although I don't see it much as I used to, so I don't know if uh, people still do that a lot, but a lot of the older built rigs do still have that. Um, in Cali, if you have 75 and older, no smog. Okay. Now, I'm curious, when they say 75 or older, does that increase every year? Like next year, is it 76 and older? Or is it always 1975 and older? Um, like here in Ohio, if a vehicle is 25 years or older, you can apply for historic plates which if you live in a smog county, um, which is basically just any county that has a, a big city, uh, or a lot of them around Cleveland, a lot of those counties have it, um, you don't have to pass any emissions if you have historic plates. Um, but you know, every year, more and more vehicles become eligible, like this year uh, being uh, 2021. Now, vehicles from 1990, six are eligible for historic plates. So that's how that works. It, it always kind of moves so that's just the most recent 25 years have to be smog checked. So I'm curious if Cali is like that as well. Um, let's see here. My 84 doesn't pass smog because the air smog pump is not connected to the crank. I'm curious about uh, smog pumps on these, on these older motors. Um, do you need them? I mean, my, my, 80, my 80 has a, a smog on a 22R, and I'm going to have to pull the engine out anyways uh, when I'm doing the restoration. So I'm curious, do I really want that on there? It already has a Weber car. It doesn't have the stop carb anymore. So do you even need, do you even need that if you don't even have the stop carb? Don't know. Um, and can you run a Weber carb out in California, or is that a definitely an emissions no-no? I'm curious. You guys have it so rough out there. Yeah, your stuff is nice, but man, they are just Nazis out there when it comes to emissions. Um, yes, cool, absolutely. I've seen so many patched frames where they do exactly that. They get the thickest metal they can find. Like, it's usually quarter inch thick. And they just weld it on with these, these bird poop welds. Um, and or just like flux core where it's just splattered and just awful and uh, they call it patched you know Me meanwhile the the area 
around it is just as weak and it's going to rot out just as soon. Um, let's see. Okay, I'm hearing Cali was okay until uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, changed it. Yeah, stock stock carbs only out there in California. Okay. In the fast lane, you can, but you won't pass. So that's rough. That is rough. That's that's too bad that only seventy four and below are are classic, you know. Because I don't know. I, I wonder why they chose that year and they chose not to advance it as cars get newer. Because I mean, at, at some point, you know. Like right now, you could have a, a 45-year-old vehicle and not have it be considered a classic in California. I don't know. That sounds like BS to me, but yeah, that's one thing you got to put up with out there, you know? Um, all right, we got one more classified here. This was a 1981 out in... Oregon, twenty five hundred bucks, hundred thousand miles. Um, Eighty one needs a little work. Came with no bed. Let's see, needs to be bolted down. I mean, come on, dude. How how hard is it to throw eight bolts in your bed and just you know? Uh, okay, yeah, I see. The, you got a set of, of seats. They need to be bolted in. So this guy just doesn't like bolting things in. I guess uh, everything works as it should. Interior pieces, wheel spaces, wheel spacers, uh, box shocks. One needs a new bolt on top. All right, this bolts are not this guy's thing. Uh, sitting on 38s. Um, let's see, they've been cut. He says it was done before they were bald, so they have a lot of tread life left. Uh, leaks a little oil, leaks a little water, fires right up. Still hasn't found the tail lights. No title. Okay, no title. There you go. That's probably why this is so cheap. Let's check it out. Clean interior. Okay, it's got a bo definitely a bob bed. That's a really bob bed. So yeah, there you go. Twenty five hundred bucks for uh, an off road rig, being that it has. No title. A little on the rough side, but hey, twenty five hundred bucks. I bet it sells soon, especially out west. All right, well that is it. That is all the classifieds for today. Um, let me check up on the comments here, and we will call the night. We ran a little bit over, so thanks for hanging out, guys. Um. Let's see. Oh, wait. You know what? I did see a comment earlier about checking the emails. And we have a few more. So we'll do that and then call it a night here. All right. This is. Oh, nice. Got the same headlights I do. Those things are bright as hell, aren't they? Okay, and you are, okay, this is uh, the guy uh, from Australia. And you know it because of this bumper. That's just, nothing says that in Australia like that. That's definitely an Aussie bumper. Oh, you guys got rust down there too, I see. Looks like an Ohio door. Yeah, right around the mirror too. I'm curious, how does that, you, do you guys use uh, salt down there? You just, you don't, it doesn't snow down there, right? I'm really curious. I have not. I would not expect to see that on a truck down there. Oh wow! Oh geez, look at that. I've never even seen this in Ohio, man. What is going on? I'm curious. Is this is this a common thing you guys have down there? Look at it over there too. Yeah, that's rough. You got you got your work cut out for you. <laughs> no pun no pun intended. You got a lot of cutting to do for that for sure. Um, let's see, 86 regular cab, 31 inch tires, 
Nice. Clean cab. I like the flatbed too. And Jeff, this is the six thousand uh, dollar diesel Land Cruiser up there in Canada. thing is I mean from 10 feet away looks like a steal for six thousand bucks okay I'm starting to see <laughs> okay it's, it, all this stuff must be uh, something they put over rust areas I'm assuming I mean for six thousand bucks though diesel um, this should sell pretty quick not bad, actually. Not bad underside at all. That is nice. Very nice. 409,000 kilometers. Oh, more info. Here we go. I am moving, and if it doesn't sell by Friday, it's coming with me. Let's see. Five-speed diesel. There you go. That's all we know. And one more, the fast lane. Oh, nice. This is a, let's see, a 1983 he has for sale for $3,500. Um, he's in the L.A. area. So here you go, guys. Check this out. 1983. Got a couple more emails here, real quick. Um, or a couple more uh, comments, real quick. Eric soaking his frame with fluid film until he can fix it properly on the 85 Toyota Mirage Dually Mini Camper. Michigan Midwest Rust. Yep, Michigan, man. That's You guys might have it worse than Ohio. two-wheel drive one ton nice hey do me a favor Eric we're about to sign off for tonight but uh, if you want to send some pictures to uh, Toyota Tuesdays at gmail.com uh, we'll check that out next week I'd like to see that so that's it for tonight guys we are uh, running a little bit over but I thank everyone for checking out the show and uh, hanging out with uh, me doing a solo show tonight next week we should be back with uh, Clinton and um, back to our regular show and hopefully we'll have some, uh, some good updates for you as, long, as well as some new classifieds. So uh, thanks for tuning in, and everybody have a good week. Good night.